Hello, I'm Itiwan Martinez Salaplas, and today I'm gonna be explaining how to do a full functional on an XDL 5000. This is a test that we usually do in the Coast Guard to make sure that your equipment is working properly. For this test, I'll be using the BNC to BNC test cable. For the receiver test, I will be adding a Molex connector to BNC test cable. And for our test equipment, we'll be using the IFR. So a quick overview of our IFR. On the left-hand side, we have the blue keys. These are our mode keys. From here, we can select transmit test, receive test as we need it. We also have the gray keys. These are referred to as software keys or soft keys for short, and they're referred to whatever is on the screen. We have our orange selector keys. This will allow us to select between frequency, level, and on and off key. This will become very useful when we do the cyanide test. After that, we have a number pad and another set of selector keys, which allows us to select between megahertz, kilohertz, volts, microvolts, etc. On the left-hand side, we have our RF inputs and outputs. For both of these tests, we'll be using that RF input output on the bottom of the right-hand corner of the IFR. For the cyanide test, we'll also be adding the AF input on the center of the IFR. So the first step will be to connect our test cable. As I, said, as I mentioned before, test cable will be connected on the bottom RF input and output, and I want to select that input and output. I do it by using the select key here. I'm moving both LEDs to input and output. We call this snake eyes for students, since it's easier for them to remember. And I'm going to connect the other side of the test cable to the antenna jack on my XDL 5000. And finally, I'm return the radio using the control head switch. Now we're ready to do a transmit test. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to press the software key for transmit frequency and input the frequency that we'll be working on. I'll be on channel six, so that frequency is 156.3 megahertz. Next step, we're going to key the microphone and whistle into it. Now we're ready to see our results. The first number we see is the offset number. This number tells how far away from the frequency is the radio actually transmitting. In this case, we're transmitting negative 40 Hertz from the 156.3 megahertz frequency. We want this number to be between negative 600 and 600. In this case, negative 40 is between that, so we call it good. The next number is the power level. This power level is at 22.2 watts. We want the power level to be between 20 and 25 watts for the XTL 5000. As always, you should check the MPC to see what your radio requires, but in this case, that number is good. The third number is the FM level. We want this number to be between three and five kilohertz. This time we got a four kilohertz, which we call it good. Now we're doing the receiver test. For this test, we'll be adding our SANA test cable. I'll be plugging in the BNC connector onto the AF input on the IFR. And the Molex connector, onto the Molex connector on the control head. To do our receiver test, we're gonna select receiver test using the blue key. Using the soft RF key, we're gonna select our frequency. We're still working on channel six, so frequency is still 156.3 megahertz. Using the orange level key, we'll select level, and we want level to be at 0.35 microvolts. Now we're ready to turn on the RF gen using the on off key. For the mod gen, we'll select mod gen on the soft key and make sure that it is at one kilohertz for frequency and our level be at three kilohertz. Now we're ready to turn on the mod gen using an on off key. For this test, we'll be looking at our cyanide reading. We want the cyanide to be larger than 12 dBs. In this case, we got 24 dBs so cyanide is good. After I got my cyanide reading, I'll be turning off RF gen and mod gen so that the IFR stops radiating. This concludes our functional test. If your equipment passes both the transmit and receiver test, then your equipment's working properly.